come alive, come walk in my counsel. Come alive, come walk in my ways. Come alive, come soak in my presence. Light and life, pure delight. Come alive, come walk in my counsel. Come alive, come walk in my ways. Come alive, come soak in my presence. Light and life, pure delight. Bursting forth with life unending. It's always exciting to journey with the Lord as He takes us from season to season as a church family and especially to enter into this new season of uh, writing new songs, recording them, worshipping God together and uh, capturing these moments has been quite an adventure. This song, Come Alive, is from Psalm 1 which declares over and over again that blessed is the man who sits not, who stands not, who walks not in the ways and things that God does not approve of. In other words, it means that when we sit, stand and walk 
in the ways that God approves, in the things of God, in the ways of God, that's when we truly start living. That's when we come alive. Come soak in my presence, light and life, pure delight. You may be at a dead end of pain and sickness, a destination to hopelessness. But Jesus' death on the cross is not past, it is present continuous that breaks these roadblocks of pain, sickness, Satan, and death. Greetings. Thank you for tuning in to Living Strong today. It's always our joy and delight to be able to come your way and bring God's word to you and also spend some time with you in prayer. Before we get into the message today. Just want to direct your attention to our church website, uh, especially the publication section on our church website. Uh, there are a number of free books. Some books are a little thick, has a little bit more content. Some are small and easy to read, but all of these are available for free. So you could go there, download, and um, read these publications uh, that cover a wide range of topics, things that are for the Christian life, uh, things that are meant to equip you for ministry uh, and things that uh, teach you how to apply the Word of God in uh, real life uh, scenarios and workplaces and so on. So we'd encourage you to make use of those resources. Uh, tell other people about it. They can download these books and uh, uh, study them. Uh, of course, if you uh, want to receive a free printed copy of any of these publications, you can send us an email with your postal address and uh, we will be happy to send you free copies of the book uh, within India. It will be our delight to be able to send that to you. On the program today, I'd like us to uh, spend some time talking about the finished work of Christ on the cross and uh, focusing on just this aspect of living out of that finished work. Uh, many of us are familiar uh, uh, about what the, the last words of Jesus were on the cross. He, before he died, or while he was on the cross, his final words were, it is finished. And it's very interesting when you look at that word in the Greek, which is uh, uh, tilio, it's a single word, which is, you know, we translate in English, we use three words to translate that. It is finished. In the Greek, the single word tilio, uh, and it has a, a, a threefold meaning, meaning uh, this one word could have been used in three different contexts. Uh, the first uh, context is that something has been brought to an end. Something has, uh, has run its full course and it's the end of it. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's finished. It's over. It's the end of it. Another context in which the word tell you is used is uh, in the sense of completion. That a command or an order that had been issued... Uh, was completed. The work, the process, whatever needed to be done uh, in order to fulfill that command or that order had been completed. So that's another sense in which that word was used. A third sense in which that word tilia was used was in the sense of completely or fully paying off a debt. So uh, if there was something that was owed, for example, a tribute, uh, a, a tax that had to be paid, a debt that had to be paid, uh, and it was paid in full, then this word till you would be used. So it's very interesting that the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross would announce uh, uh, it is finished. There was a, a sense of completion, in fact, a sense of triumph uh, when he announced that before he died on the cross. And I want us to uh, just uh, think about that, that when Jesus Christ said it is finished, finished. He was saying something was brought to an end. That was it. He was also saying that a command was completed. Um, uh, the whatever the father intended for him to do, uh, whatever the father intended, uh, uh, sent him to do was completed. The work was finished, completed. And also a debt was fully paid. The debt that we owed was completely paid. So we, the debtors, 
could now be free. And uh, it is God's intent after Christ's death and resurrection for us to live out of that finished work. Meaning, it's not just good uh, theology that we talk about. Yes, Jesus Christ died for us on the cross 2,000 years ago. Uh, He said it is finished. Uh, That's nice to hear. Uh, It's not just about knowing something intellectually, but God intends for us to live out of that in our everyday life. It should make a difference in our daily life here on earth. Now, many of us understand what the Bible has to teach us about the fall of man and the consequences and uh, why Jesus Christ came into the world and why he had to die on the cross. We understand that because of Adam's sin, Uh, The entire human race was put in subjection to sin, to sickness, to Satan, and death. And all of the evil that came in because of the fall. And when the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world, when God became a man, He came to completely reverse the fall. He came to undo everything that had come in because of the fall. And uh, that's what he came to accomplish. And and, then through his life, through his death on the cross, and through his resurrection and his ascension, Jesus Christ completed that work. Everything that was necessary that had to be done so that mankind, people, could be set free uh, from the fall and all of that, all the things that it brought upon us. And so when we talk about living out of the finished work of Christ on the cross, it means that we could now therefore uh, look at the cross as a means of our complete redemption, our complete freedom uh, from uh, the fall and all of its consequences. Now, of course, we need to keep things in mind the way God put it across to us, what we understand is that we experience part of our Uh, redemption right now here on earth during our lifetime, our life on earth. And then there is a future part of it, a part of that redemption that we will enjoy in the future. Uh, uh, Once Jesus Christ uh, gives or comes back and gives us our glorified bodies and so on. So there is still a part of that redemption that is in out in the future. But we want to talk about specifically how the cross of Christ affects us here and now and how we can live out of that uh, in our lives. Because if Jesus died on the cross, and he rose up again, and he's alive today, and uh, if all of that would only make uh, a difference in life, you know, in the future, and doesn't change anything now here in the present, then really all we have is a faith, faith in his work, but it's not affecting us here and now, so we just have to live the way uh, everyone else lives, whether you're saved or unsaved. But that is not true. Those of us who are saved, those of us who have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, who have faith in Christ, our life on earth here and now is affected, is is transformed, and we live out of the benefits of the finished work of Christ on the cross. And so that's what we want to talk about over the next few weeks and address specifically how the cross of Christ affects us, one, in relationship uh, relationship to sin, Secondly, in relationship to sickness and disease. Thirdly, in relationship or in our uh, dealing with Satan and his demonic forces. And also in the way we see death. And so we want to address these four areas as we go uh, through this series in the weeks to come. So let's talk about the first part. What we do know is that Adam, through his sin, uh, brought the entire human race in subjection to sin. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12 bears this out very succinctly for us. Paul writes, he says, Therefore, uh, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. So he said, through one man sin came into this world, and this passed upon everyone, and uh, all have sinned. So you see, every human being is now brought in subjection to sin. So this has two, there are two issues connected to this. First of all is the issue of the penalty for sin, meaning that sin will have its consequences. I have to pay for my sin. I mean, uh, sin cannot just be overlooked and just condoned. 
Um, there's a consequence. Somebody has to pay for it. Uh, the person who committed the wrong or committed the crime will have to face the consequences of the crime. So there's an issue of penalty. Uh, then there is also the issue of, of the problem of sin itself, meaning we are now enslaved to it. We are now in subjection to it. Uh, so how do we come out of that? Because uh, uh, paying, getting the pr- penalty of sin paid is one side of it. Uh, if we just continue to keep on sinning, uh, it's not setting our lives free or making a change in our lives in any way. So there's the issue of the problem of sin, uh, the, uh, and the penalty of sin, and that of the problem of sin. Now, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he dealt with both of these issues. He paid the full penalty of sin once and for all. For all sin of all time, he paid it. And, and the Bible brings this out in many, many scriptures, where Jesus Christ, uh, he paid for the sins of the whole world, First John chapter 2. And verse 2 says that he is the payment for our sins. And not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. He paid it all. And he paid it for all time. So his death on the cross was once and for all. Again, this is brought out in many scriptures. I'll just reference a few. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 27, the writer of Hebrews says, talking about the high priest Jesus, He says, who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once for all when he offered up himself. So when Jesus Christ died for us on the cross, he made a once for all complete sacrifice for all sins through all time. And that sacrifice that he made was more than sufficient to deal with both the penalty of sin and with the problem of sin. So now, you and I, as believers, as people who believe in the cross of Jesus and what he did for us in his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, we have to live, or we should be living, in the finished work of Christ on the cross when it comes to dealing with sin. Now, how do we apply that? And in what sense, in what ways would it affect our daily life? Now, we just want to talk about that. First of all, we live as people who know that their sins are forgiven. Uh, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 12, when the apostle John writes to the believers, he says, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. So he's, he's, he's calling them to recognition that their sins have been forgiven. So our debt of sin has been fully paid, and so we no longer live under the sense of, of a burden of sin. We are no longer um, fearful of a penalty of sin because we know that has been paid in full uh, by the Lord Jesus Christ. So we live as people who know that our sins are forgiven. The Bible refers to this in, uh, as, as the joy of our salvation. So this brings us joy. We say, Lord, I thank you that my sins are forgiven and I'm not the, I don't have to pay for my sins. It has already been paid. And there is also this, this recognition of a present continuous cleansing. That means we know that you know, we would make mistakes, we would commit sin, uh, even though that's not our desire. But even then, there is a present continuous cleansing available for us. And as John puts it in 1 John 1 verse 9, he says, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, which means... Uh, We are drawing from the finished work of Christ on the cross, even for anything that we do now, uh, that there is a present continuous cleansing and it takes sin out of the way so that our fellowship with God continues uninterrupted. We can continue walking in that communion fellowship with Jesus Christ. We also are people who live completely free from guilt, shame, and condemnation because we recognize that we are justified. We've been acquitted. Uh, we are pardoned. So now when we approach God, we do not come to Him uh, with a sense of guilt, shame, and condemnation, uh, but we come to Him knowing that our, th- our slate is clean, so to speak, or we are righteous, we are clean in His eyes. Uh, as the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11, he, he reminds them of the past. He says, you know, some of, such were some of you, uh, you are fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, sodomites, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, 
extortioners and he says, you know, such were some of you. He lists all kinds of things. He says, such were some of you. But he says in verse 11, you've been washed, you've been sanctified, you've been justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Holy Spirit of God. So he says, look, that was your past. That, that was, you know, uh, the way you live. But today you are different. You're clean. You're washed and you are justified. That means you are free from any sense of guilt, shame or condemnation. That's no longer part of you because of what Jesus Christ has done. So that's, that's a, a tremendous blessing that we have when we recognize the finished work of Christ on the cross. Our sins have been paid. The debt's been removed. We can stand before God just boldly, without any condemnation, knowing that his blood has cleansed us uh, and set us free. Uh, but we also understand that on the cross, Jesus broke the power of sin. We, we mentioned earlier, there, were two fold, there was a twofold issue. There was the penalty of sin, but there was also the problem of sin. The problem of sin was because sin had its power over us. We were controlled by it. We were enslaved by it. But the Bible tells us in Romans, the sixth chapter, and we don't have time to uh, delve into it, but Romans 6 tells us very clearly, and especially in verse 6, that Jesus Christ broke the power of sin so that we no longer are slaves to sin. And Paul writes in verse 14 of that same chapter in Romans 6, he says, sin will not have dominion over you. So because of the cross of Christ, we can look at any sin problem and say that sin will not have dominion over me. The power of that sin has been broken off of my life because Jesus Christ broke it on the cross. Now this is where many Christians fail. They recognize that the penalty of sin has been dealt with. That means they know that Jesus Christ paid for their sin. What many believers do not recognize is that they do not recognize that Jesus broke the power of sin. So we no longer need to even commit sin because we're not under the power of sin. I understand that we have a mind that needs to be renewed and a flesh that needs to be crucified. And so long as we have that ongoing battle, there will be times when we do wrong things and we commit sin. I understand that. But the the truth that Paul presents to us is that because of the finished work of Christ on the cross, the power of sin over our lives has been broken. And so we no longer are slaves to sin. And so we need to live out of that. And the Holy Spirit has come to empower us to live out of the finished work of Christ on the cross. And that's why in Romans 8 and verse 13, our Paul writes, he says, If you by the Spirit put an end to the sinful deeds of your body, you will live. That means the Holy Spirit has come to enable us to put an end to sin in our lives because Christ broke the power of sin. So the Holy Spirit empowers us to live victorious over sin. So truly, I want us to understand that if we live out of the finished work of Christ on the cross, we can live a life that has complete victory over sin. We no longer are under the guilt, shame, and condemnation of sin, and neither are we enslaved, or overpowered, and subject to sin in our lives. We can live victorious over sin because on the cross, Jesus finished the work. He brought an end to sin. He completed the work the Father sent him to do. He paid the debt of sin in full. We are free and we are, we are able to live victorious over sin. All People's Church is happy to announce the release of three new publications. Receiving God's guidance, offenses don't take them, and water baptism. These are available for free. You can use these resources for your personal study or in small groups, churches and ministries. So download these at apcwo.org publications or request a free copy by writing to us at contact at apcwo.org. We trust this telecast. Uh, was a blessing to you and opened your understanding and perhaps just reminded you of uh, what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross and challenged you to live out of that finished work of Christ on the cross. When you deal with sin, you don't deal with it on your own strength, but you deal with it on the basis of what Jesus did on the cross and with the empowering of the Holy Spirit in your life. We're going to pray and before we close. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for each one listening that this truth will come to their hearts afresh, will enlighten their hearts and minds, and God will result in them walking free 
from any sense of guilt or shame or condemnation and also empower them to live victorious over sin. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I break every yoke of sin, every enslaving habit, every overpowering sin over their lives, or break it so that they can walk free. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the telecast today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. We invite you to visit our church website apcwo.org where we have several free resources like MP3 sermons, sermon notes and publications that you can download and use. You can also call or email us to request a free copy of our publications. And please feel free to share your feedback and do share your prayer requests when you contact us.